I know if I can get this tooth as clean as possible, I am giving the body the best chance and I'm creating an environment for healing. All right, Dr. Valerie Cantor, one of my best friends, my sister, sits on the board of Symbiotica, back on Wake the Fake Up at the Temple Home. What do you think of this setup? Honor to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I'm this really, is... really excited. I love the energy here. I love this fresh oxygen coming off these beautiful plants. Right. And just nice to be in your home and, mm. you know, you create a really beautiful space. Mm. Uh, you and the people around you, it's its epic, and I'm thrilled. Always well, you, love to come down, and there was no traffic today, which was pretty incredible. You didn't come down on a boat or helicopter? <laughs> no. I mean, L.A. to Orange no, County is intense. through in the carpool lane. And, intense. Yeah. You can give anyone a toothache. <laughs> um, so if you don't know who Dr. Valerie is, she is not only a dear sister and good friend, but also a mentor in ways um, when it comes to holistic health. And we connected about five years ago, um, I think down at the sanctuary in San Diego. And then from there, it's been the unraveling of sorts and always weaving and um, sharing all kinds of knowledge and information. You've been part of the entire Symbiotica ride, and which is exciting because we're you know moving into oral care, oral health. We've, we've waited a long time because this is something you got to do right and you got to come through it. Um, it's not picking up, picking off like the low hanging fruit. It's, it's serious work. And... Tell us a little bit about your background. You are in endodontics, mm -hmm. which endo is within, like endogenous. Yeah. And second part of that word, meaning tooth, the Greek word. What is that exactly? Yeah. Well, um, everything I'm doing, I'm working deep within the tooth. And the tooth is interconnected, obviously, with the rest of their body, communicating on every level, you know, electrical, physical, emotional. A lot of trauma is stored in our teeth. And so it really actually has a very powerful meaning when you actually look at it and step back. Traditionally, it means, hey, we're working deep inside the tooth. We're working on the structures, uh, blood vessels and nerve tissues and lymphatics that lie within the tooth and are communicating with the oral environment and basically talking to all the bacteria and everything that's, you know, directing our function and our communication with the environment around us. Okay. So lo and behold, we're talking about holistic thought, <laughs> right? And that's what biodentistry is. And you are a biodentist, right? And so do you define yourself as a biodentist? Absolutely. I mean, you kind of gave me that term. I never called yeah. myself that. I found when I started discovering, you know, well, dentistry, I was born into quite literally. My dad was graduating dental school and I was born in the college town while he was wrapping it up, basically. Interesting. And so uh, I really was made for this. And I got to play in his office as a little kid and assisted and got to see a lot of bloody, scary things as a young high schooler. Um, and so that really prepped me. And I was able to take that and then go through school, but rediscover it on my own, really. I wasn't sure what type of medicine or health I wanted to be into, but I did feel very connected to that and to caring for people. Uh, I got to look up to my dad, see how he took care of so many people, see how his patients loved him. And, you know, it resonated with me. So I was like, you know, I think this is something I can do. And I ended up going into dentistry thinking I was going to work with him. And turns out I was out of there. I moved to California immediately. I really connected with the state and with the with the vibe out here. And my sister, my sister, luckily at the time, came out here for a short period of time to work, and that's what drew me to Los Angeles. And once I was there, I was meant to be there, and I, I haven't left yet. So, so th that's an incredible story, and I I, I want to actually go deeper into how that unraveled into who you are today, because mm -hmm. that's probably over the last decade, I'm assuming. Um, if not longer. And you mentioned something that, that sticks out to me is that the teeth, the, the tissues around it are connected through all sorts of connection points throughout the body. And I learned that in traditional Chinese herbal medicine, mm -hmm. that there are mer meridian points to each tooth that yeah. activate um, detoxification pathways, lymphatic pathways, energetics. We know we're electrical. Most people listening to this right now, they're on that level of mm -hmm. awareness. Yeah. They get that we're not, this isn't some material suit and it's all allopathic. There is a holistic 
awareness that needs to be had. Let's get into that a little bit because today's draconian dentistry, art, archaic, is yank and pull, filled with filled yeah. with metal, yeah. destroy it, destroy, hit with antibiotics. It's you know, it's, it's bizarre, it's right? Bizarre. When you really just look at what's happening out it's there, it's like, how did this actually occur? Like, how did we get here? Yeah. And so, um, when you say bio dentist, it's really just acknowledging. I think just baseline acknowledging that, hey, your tooth is connected to the rest of your body, sir. And it's it's it blows my mind. Patients even just yesterday came in and they were like, yeah, you know, my dentist is saying it, this tooth, it's not connected, you know, to this other thing. There's no connection there. It can't be causing that. It can't be connected in any way. And it's like, how do we actually, how could you say something like that when obviously there's this amazing network of fascia that is tying together every single element of our body? It's lining everything, every blood vessel, every lymphatic, and electricity and information is traveling through that. And then that turns on all the chemical signals and everything else that this crazy communication highway that's going on in our body at all times. And it's instantaneous. Right. And that's why it's so fast. It's so amazing energetically how one thing can just shift you. And then people want to, um, people want to, you know, blame or, you know, look at one event as like, oh, this thing is the thing that really, you know, set me off. When give me an example. Well, I, for example, um, let's just say, you know, someone had a major, you know, tooth infection. Yeah. And now they're noticing their whole body is starting to break down, and all this stuff's going on. It's like, well, it took you, it took something to get to this place, right? There's a dysbiosis happening in your mouth. That's just a representation of what's happening in your whole body. Yeah. And so we really have to start backtracking. When you see disease start manifesting in the mouth and in the rest of the body, it didn't happen overnight. This is a lifetime journey. This is a lifetime experience as humans that we get to have. And it's all about lessons. That's right. And so I love what you're doing and educating people and really starting to pick things apart. And that's what needs to happen in school in dental school, and now even in continuing education and starting to reteach some of the healthcare practitioners that are out there that maybe are starting to ask questions or noticing in themselves or their family, hey, maybe this all isn't adding up, this, oh, these things aren't connected. And it usually takes someone, uh, a drastic event in their own health or someone in their family for something to switch. And that's actually the story. Most holistic dentists that are out there, that's what happened. They happened they to themselves, sick. right? They got sick, they got mercury poisoning. Yeah. Oh, I was removing all these amalgams unsafely because the schools are aren't taking any precautions, you know, in teaching these really, I mean, you have a basic mask on and you have a, you know, high vo volume evacuator, a, a suction, but really it's not being taken, I think, as seriously. It and be in a hazmat and, suit. And the, yeah. And well, and some people do. And I think everything is a really needs to be customized to the person the same way as a, as a doctor doing the services and as the patient, you know, I may be an excellent detoxer and it may actually not affect me that much to have, you know, mercury in my field or in my realm, whereas someone else may get extremely sick and they may not be able to deal with that and it just shuts down their whole body. And so everything is really unique to the individual. How do we create or spark this non-linear way of thinking? Because what you're talking about is 100% true. Yeah. My system, the way I handle stress, the way I handle a toxic load could be completely different than yours. Yeah. And we are trying to put everyone into one box and that is the industrial way. We yeah. see that in every other system out there from our education system, yeah. medical system, you know, financial systems. That's why everyone's collapsing because mm -hmm. everyone's been put into some kind of you know, non-unique box. Yeah. And when it comes to oral health, we need, we need a system in place that's individualized. Mm -hmm. And who has the time, energy, and money for that, though? Yeah. That's, that's something that almost the demand has to be there. Mm -hmm. So these systems get ant get subsidized a little bit, yeah. right? And then it's, there's there's benefits coming in because a healthier humanity or a healthier, let's just say United States, yeah. is a better economy. Like, whoa, yeah. the light bulb needs to turn on. You get, your, you get children, adults, mm -hmm. elderly, better oral care through the 
70, 80, 90, 100 years of their life, yeah. you're going to have more production. You're going to have more happiness. You're going to have less disease. You're going to have more you know, government-sponsored programs that have to pay for the, for these people. Yeah. Right? It's oh, like it we're asked sense. backwards, right? Well, it starts with the individual. Yep. Obviously, you have to care enough to, one, brush your teeth properly, which we're going to talk about today. Sure. You have to care enough to actually sit with your children and spend the time and make it a thing. Like, this is our family thing. Like, we brush our teeth together, and we love it. We love it. And then, do you guys want to do it again? Okay, let's do it. Right. And so that that's the energy that has to be there. And I think it feels like a chore to a lot of people. Yep. So I spend a lot of my time in my initial patient exam about just actually discussing it, showing them, and, and creating the value. And like, hey, this is what it feels like to keep your mouth clean and to actually care about what you're doing and to like not try to do it in 30 seconds. You know, it's like, let me just set 10 minutes out actually, because I love my teeth. I love eating. I love nutrition and I love feeling great and smelling great. And, you know, so does my Shocking. partner or people that come close up in my face. So, I mean, there's that whole thing, which I'd love to get into. And then all, obviously on the commercial side, I mean, let's get Symbiotica up in here and involved. I mean, it. Yeah. there, it is crazy, but in order for you, for example, as an individual to know, am I going to be safe with certain dental materials? You know, is this going to work for me? Just because something's biocompatible, quote unquote, I've learned in my experience, you know, I thought I had materials that are so biocompatible that no one's going to have an issue with it. And I got schooled, uh, a patient came in and said, hey, actually ceramics, I do not do well with. And I was shocked. I was like, oh, really? That's interesting. She showed me her, you know, compatibility report and it was right there. She's like, no, this, this isn't going to work for me. So we had to actually use a material that for me, I felt like was more of a disservice. I'm like, I'm going to use this resin material that has these certain monomers and things. And she's like, yes, for me, that is better in my body. But you have to be enlightened enough to one, do the work, to do the research, to figure out how to do these tests and what they mean. And then of course, you've got all these different types of tests and different companies doing it. So one of the kind of groups of testing that we can do is um, testing and giving you like antibodies, basically. Like what do you have antibodies to? What materials? But really, if you've ever been in contact with any of the materials, like you're probably going to have some antibodies of to course, it. Yeah. So it's not as accurate. And so there's other tests that do um, are looking for more hypersensitivity, like type 4 delayed hypersensitivity reactions, which actually is what you're looking for. To get this test, you know how what a pain it is? I have to like get my patients in, only I have one time slot a week to do it. Monday morning, 9 a.m., I've got to draw the blood myself because none of the labs can handle it or make it happen. I have to get my team to FedEx to overnight it internationally to get it to Germany to go through this lab, and hopefully it gets through customs. And if anyone else tries to do it, it doesn't get through. Okay, so l l what you're saying here is the system. Yeah, right? the system. Okay, okay. <laughs> got us. So I, I think that's like 15 leagues above seeing how your antibodies react to mm -hmm. conductive material. I think it's fair to say that mercury, silver, yeah. you know, Kuberg zirconia, whatever they're using, mm -hmm. uh, all these things sh don't belong in the mouth, yeah. right? There's some basics that we can make some generalities about. Right. Um, but if you are going to get an implant, for example, and you're going to actually drill a hole in your body that's going to be constantly connected to your bloodstream and your lymphatic to the jaw bone. You're going to put a material there. You know, there are options and the main two options are, you know, zirconia implants, which all of the holistic dentists are just slam dunk. This is what we're doing. And then there's What's other option is I'll talk about it. Titanium implants, yep. which, you know, a lot of issues may be occurring with this. This titanium molecules may be dissociating. We don't know what kind of antenna this thing is, you know, when you're out in the environment with everything going on. Right next to your brain. Yeah, right next to your brain. So, and if there's other metals in the mouth, you really can have issues because you start to create current just between your salivary flow. That's right. And that's a major disturbance. Acid, salt in the mouth, anaerobic yes. activity. Yes. It's so full on. There's layers of kind of complexities here when you're choosing these materials. But I think implant choice is really important because it is within your bloodstream. Your teeth, the materials, while they're, you know, maybe touching your gum tissue, you can keep them clean and you know, a lot of the fillings might not actually be, you know, underneath the surface where they're constantly involved in your like circular fluids. Let's go in order here. So yeah. people can, people listening right now, they can follow along. And okay. I think that I, it just hit me like, let's strategize yeah. the common ones, right? Mm -hmm. So someone gets a toothache, mm -hmm. right? And all of a sudden they go to the dentist down the street on the corner 
This guy's been operating for 30, 40 years, old school practice, or it could be a new, new facility too. Yeah. And they say, you have a cavity. We want to fill that cavity. Yeah. Is that the right thing to do? So if there is a hole in your tooth, okay, it's going to be very difficult for you to clean and remineralize that every day. The now, hole comes from the infection within the tooth. Plaque has got in there and yeah, inflammatory let's, response. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's start, yeah. So you don't adequately, you know, brush plaque off of your teeth for a certain amount of time. For the first 12 to 24 hours, it's a mild environment. There's only a few invaders. They're starting to have fun and they're building up and starting to create the just the beginning of plaque. Once you get up to a week, now you start to get a much bigger family. You start to get these little colonies that are forming and the plaque is like visible. If you can see plaque on someone's teeth, it's been there for days. It takes one to two days just to even start the film there. And then after that, it starts to pull minerals from how your does saliva. It show, how does it show visually? Is it is it the so, layer? Is it that Yeah, you're gonna, hard? you're gonna see, at first you're gonna see just like a white kind of matted film. film right. um, your teeth should look shining, the light should be able to reflect and you should really like see that nice like glistening enamel, like squeaky clean. Because there, there are micropores in there, so it's refracting light. Exactly, it's but prisms. It, Our yeah. teeth are just made of prisms, it's super cool. That's right. So as the plaque builds up, though, you start to get this coating. So you're going to get less light refractory, and then you're also going to be like, um, you're going to see more of just like these dark yellow colors, and then especially you'll see it around the gum line, and then the gums will start to get darker pink and into the red colors as they start to get inflamed. What's happening the is- infection spreading. Yeah, the there. bacteria are just- releasing toxins yeah. and it's turning in on a cytokine storm in your gum tissue. Yeah, so your body's responding. Your body's responding, trying to like just bring in your neutrophils, Warfare. bring in your, all your immune cells, trying to call them in, but they can only get to the outer layer. Once you've got biofilm formed, they can't get to the deeper layers. And what do you think's in the deeper layers? The anaerobes, the parasites, the spirochetes, the stuff that's like, we are now protected by all you surface bacteria. You guys are dancing around. We'll show the slide. These guys are having a blast. I just saw the video you showed me. <laughs> I almost threw up because that, that, that's hectic and that's full on. Yeah. And I know firsthand because of the cavitation surgery that I had. Mm -hmm. And when we went and biopsied the material in there, I knew it sh showed up in there. And I was like, are you kidding me? That was harboring yeah. in my jaw for yeah. however long. Yeah. Okay, let, let, let's continue. So, so someone's got a sore tooth. The, the dentist says they got a cavity. Yeah, the plaque's been building up and that basically the bacteria, between a combination of what's going on in your mouth and the acidity in your mouth and the lack of maybe minerals and just nutrients. And, nutrients. And, and all the enzymes and everything that your saliva is supposed to be producing to protect, you know, maybe inhibited for some reason. A lot of people don't have the proper salivary flow or proper components because your nutrition's off and you're eating processed foods. So, so this all attacks of these the things. nerve. That, now this starts to attack Eventually. the nerve. So the teeth have the inner part of the tooth. It has a blood vessel and a, and a nerve complex that's running in the middle. And then it's got like hundreds of thousands of little antennas, little cell extensions called odontoblasts. And those are constantly sensing the environment and they're communicating with your mouth. And they're saying, hey, we notice there's some bacterial toxins come in and we're gonna pump up our fluid flow. We're gonna push them out. But guess what? If you're stressed, if you haven't been sleeping and you're eating sugar in your diet or processed foods, that fluid flow can't happen. It reverses. Now the toxins are starting to come in. The bacteria are getting deeper in and you, they start producing acid and now you have your tooth starts demineralizing. The first stage is like the tooth starts turning like this bright white color. It gets like super white, opaque, and like chalky looking. And then eventually the enamel just starts breaking off. Now you've got a hole in your tooth. Once you have a hole in your tooth, you can't grow that back. If you have- This is the darkness that you see in the tooth. It looks like a dark purple. That's yes. the hole we're Usually talking what's about. going on with that is you've got your enamel still somewhat intact, but bacteria got through a crevice, yep. through a, a micro crack or fracture or some sort of hole that is under the surface that you can't see. And then they started eating the tooth structure from the inside out. Got it. That's usually what's going on. It can still, in even some of these stages, remineralize itself. So you, it's never as, too a, late. as a dentist, you go in and some of these cavities are hard. They're black. The tubules are filled with, you know, bacteria and their byproducts, but it's hard as a rock. Okay. And so you can make a choice as a patient. Hey, I want to leave that. And a lot of dentists that are very holistic are like, hey, let's leave the structure. Let's do our best aesthetically to, you know, cover it up or we can whiten it sometimes. Well, what's the, the standard, what's the standard um, operating procedure for a basic 
perspective or a basic dentistry perspective, what do they usually do in that case? They it, drill yeah. a hole. They drill away probably most of the, the any of the soft material, okay. which is called like effect, effected dentin. When the dentin inside is just goo, you have, to, you have to remove that. Like at that point, there's no active cell and fluid flow to bring minerals into these areas. So once you have a hole with just soft goo in it, you have to clean it out to an so extent. So you're drilling on the top surface. You create a hole, you remove all that material, all that mm -hmm. gunk, all that infection. Yeah. And then they're they're just filling it up and then put a crown on it. That's that's standard? That's standard. A okay. crown comes some of the time when there's like a certain amount of structure what, missing. What do you do? If someone's listening to this right now and, yeah. and that that's the option that they've been given. Yeah. They get a second opinion from a biodentist? Yeah, a biodentist. Uh, the movement is, you know, you can look for a dentist that's practicing what's called biomimetic dentistry. Okay. Which is a and you have to be careful that you're not just finding a dentist that's using that as a marketing <laughs> you know, tool. It's really you. One of my patients asked me the other day, they're like, how do I actually know that I'm getting good dental care? Well, teach us, teach us right said, now so people I know, can but... use discernment <laughs> to know if they're just using the terminology to yeah, hook you in. Yeah, you have how to you act, like, ask them what courses they've taken. You know, ask, <laughs> Literally, just say, oh, how did you learn about this? How long have you been practicing this? What is it? Ask them the questions. The dentists that get annoyed by these consultations they probably aren't going to be the dentist for you. We've talked about this before, you know, with farmers markets. Ask the farmer what practices, how are they tilling yeah. the soil, what are they doing, what's their standard process of how they sow everything and how what yeah. they feed, what they feed and all that stuff. But it's the same you, thing. Thank you for asking this. I mean, it's yeah, so interesting because it feels so basic, but it's really my patient when he asked me, he goes, "How do I know I'm getting good dentistry done?" And I was like, "Well, you get it done." And then you come here and I'll let you know if they did a good job. <laughs> and he's like, wow, that That's sucks. Hectic. I know. And so you, you know, you have to connect with the person. You've got to trust them. Uh, you have to do your research. You can read all the reviews and maybe they have great reviews. That doesn't always mean that the quality is really there, but they need, you know, the more that they're educated and I think the more they're invested in newer equipment and you know what's happening with this if they know what biomimetic dentistry is that's a great start and what it means is hey we're trying to mimic your natural tooth structure so we're going to minimize the amount that we remove keep as much as we can and not just have this general going to drill it all away and pop a crown on there that's the old school way now we're actually saying hey enamel is actually the best thing around let's keep as much of it as we can yeah. Okay, so so we'll link people. This is conversations will be ha that will be had. Yes, and we'll try I have to, some resources. You have for some resources. At least some of the organizations that then will share with you dentists that have you know went through all of the certifications. I think that's a great. That's great it right start. there. So you know, we, if they who's can pull, pull their completed the course? Yeah, yeah, who's completed? Who's taken it all the way? Um, so that and you want to see someone that is kind of at a range of things. That's why my practice is called integrative endodontics because everyone on my team has really studied everything. We've studied ozone, lasers, biomimetics, you know, all the different aspects of like what's going on in this new realm of health and wellness when yep. it comes to, you know, the oral cavity and we're there and we're learning every day and we're constantly growing in that in that aspect just like anything else how you do anything is how you do everything we are evolving every single day yeah. this is a living breathing ecosystem that you're a part of too i mean what you know today versus yesterday yeah. is completely different so let's switch gears a little bit and then we'll come back around to root canals okay. and possibly cav cavitations and yeah. then i'll tell the story and we'll go okay. back and forth on that let's talk about cosmetic dentistry because mm -hmm. That is the thing right now, right? Everyone cares about, okay, so I don't want to know anything that's happening up there. I don't want to know the internal health. Yeah. I don't want to understand systemic inflammation, oxidative stress. I don't even want to talk about arthrosclerotic disease, yeah. all these things, because those are directly related to the root cause of your health, which is the in the oral, which is in the mouth. Forget about all that. Let's talk about cosmetic dentistry because that's what everybody cares oh, about. It hurts, the, yeah. So what's your take on veneers and Invisalign and all these other things. Yeah. Just give us a brief summary on all this because I get hit up every mm -hmm. single day. Yeah. Shervine, should I get veneers? Is this a problem? Who should I go to do this? What do I do about tooth whitening? I mean, it's this, this whole you know yeah. material world. Well, I, the, the people and the patients that I know 
Now, remember, I see people that have issues, you know, and yeah. so I am a little biased because I have like kind of a certain group coming to me. Emergency people. Yeah, so emergency speak. people, people that have had, that did the stuff and now are having issues. And that's like a whole thing. It's like, you know, we can take some teeth out, we can pop some implants in, but then what do you do when things go wrong, actually? Do you take more teeth out? Now, all of a sudden, now, oh, I don't actually have enough teeth left. It's like, it becomes this domino effect. And what I heard, even just this last weekend, I'm sitting around casual environment and this 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 kid with just this full rack of you know crown teeth on the upper and he's like well yeah I just had him drill all my teeth down and I put all these caps on and now I get to replace them every 10 years and you could just see he was so you know he was so affected mentally by his choice yeah. at some moment in his life it's like you know kind of like getting some crazy tattoo on your whole body it's like well now that's you that you got that now so that's what you're living with but with your teeth it's it can be devastating sure. and so just really think about it you know love your teeth this like goes to like just loving your teeth having intention with how you're caring for them and it, obviously if you can start and instill this in the young generation now you know we're given these this this tooth shape and everything that you're given it matches the rest of your body it's like this is what you're supposed to have and so when you go and put a veneer on or a crown on you're literally drilling away the amazing structure the enamel you're drowning your teeth so your teeth member have open pores and they're communicating with your environment. Second you put a crown on it, it's not communicating anymore. It can't talk to its buddies next door. It doesn't really know what's going on. You're drowning it in this material and now its senses are distracted. Imagine if you had like thousand pound weight on you, you're not going to be able to like move through the yard in the same way and like feel the wind on you and like bristle against the plants. It's like you, when you're covered in this material, you lose your connection. Wow. And so, uh, and, and then you get a crown or a bridge and every single thing that happens in your teeth, all these amazing sensors that our teeth have, our teeth are like the most, the coolest like nerve tissue in the body. Yeah. Um, they, they don't function the same way anymore. So you they don't can, react the same way. You then can, you break them because you're biting too hard. You, don't, you can't respond as fast. And you, know, you can't swallow and breathe as well because your mouth just doesn't know what to do as quickly as it should. And so, I mean, we got to keep our teeth naked and run around having fun and just keep them <laughs> clean. You know what I mean? I mean, I think <laughs> our source code did it right and right for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's the human ego that jumps in there mm -hmm. and says... Let's manipulate it this way yeah. and make it better this way. And I, I like what you're doing because you're working with nature. Mm -hmm. You're working to get nature back to its balance. Mm -hmm. All the procedural work that you do, all the extra, the lasers that you work with, mm -hmm. ozone therapies, mineralization, mm -hmm. All of these things. It's like are, minerals, oxygen, light, and sound. Which is like, nature. That's my core. I'm like, yes, how do we mimic nature? And how do we take this brilliant, brilliant stuff? And how do we apply it in, you know, inside of a clinic? It's really cool. So, so that's your, your, your take overall arching umbrella take on cosmetic dentistry. Mm -hmm. So somebody. Now, now sometimes, let, let's, let's, let's just hit this other end. Sure. Sometimes, you know. You may have an emotional, you know, disturbance because of an aesthetic issue and the smile, it's so important. It's like, it's that way you connect with people. So there's always a balance. Totally. There's always, you know, you have to look at the benefits and the risks of everything involved. And sometimes like, it's like, hey, go for it. You just need to find the right practitioner that's following biomimetic principles. So we're removing minimal amounts of tooth structure. And there's a lot of options out there. Sometimes they don't even have to remove your tooth structure. Sometimes they can just add to. Sure. And so depending on your facial structure, your smile, how high your smile line is, a lot of factors have to be considered. And you know when you go to someone who's really good, one, you're probably waiting in their waiting room a little bit because right. they're probably becoming a perfectionist in another room with a patient. And it's like, just chill, okay? And it's probably yeah. taken a while to get in to see them. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It might take a while. You might be on a six-month waiting list. And it's like, yeah. you know what? Keep brushing. And you'll get in there and time flies, Get luckily. the roots healthier yeah. before we work on the and outer And that's edge. part of the, one of the things we wanted right. to talk about was, yeah. like, how do you prep your body before you go do all this dental work? You right. know, before you go to that first appointment. What's your take on Invisalign and mm -hmm. braces and this whole thing? I mean, we already know what's going on with that with children and how that can really impact their palate. Yeah. Cause breathing issues. Yeah. 
you know, that can lead into all kinds of crazy pathologies. But just as an adult yeah. and someone wants to do Invisalign, what's your take on that? Well, the sooner you do it, the better because your bones are just like much easier to move when you're, malleable. when you're young. Yeah, it's the right. best time. And before all of your um, your skeletal like muscles and your bones finalize kind of their movement, if you can catch it in the right window, it can what actually window are we talking about? perfect synergy. Really young, they're starting with some expanders. Okay. Okay, so uh, the old school way of orthodontists like, okay, how do we just get your teeth straight you yeah. know like pull them out do whatever they look straight they look good ah, don't worry about how they fit together you yeah know, like it's like that's kind of what was going you know, on that, for the a headgear while. contraptions yeah with the hooks like, on the canines back, rubber, rubber bands everywhere <laughs> you're just like Ur. yeah i mean i had my own journey with that and so i think <laughs> i think ex just expansion 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 yeah you want bigger you can always bring it back in later if you go too big and that's actually what they're doing a lot now is they're expanding they're breaking bones they're moving things things in some major surgeries or with different appliances and they're sometimes over expanding to get everything and they're like okay now we have enough room now let's tighten it up and get everything into the perfect position yep. but you really need to go to someone who is an, occl an occlusal expert that's working with an orthodontist you got to find the right team there's a couple great teams around the u.s so there's one kind of on each coast and in different areas so we can put some resources up for your people for sure. Let's do so that. that. They have, you know, some good people at least to consult with. And then, you know, there's there's pockets of people and I'm working on creating a database of all of the people that I trust that I can refer patients to. So we have we have it going and we have, we're doing courses and things like that to teach people about our realm, regenerative treatments with the laser, with the ozone, you know, integrative endodontics. Our whole goal is just keeping teeth alive, keeping them as not like the way they were given to you, you know, and just trying to preserve that as much as possible. And support the entire ecosystem within the human body with supreme, yeah. best ever oral health. Yeah, right? for sure. Let's definitely do a, another conversation just on palate expansion sure. and mm -hmm. the breathing and, mm -hmm. you know, all the issues that come with that, because, you know, I've been dealing with that. I think you've yeah. been dealing with that to a certain extent. Generation, our whole generation is yeah. just, we're too narrow. Way too narrow. We're too narrow. We're, and, and what, you know, what, what she's talking about is our palate mm -hmm. is too narrow. So our tongue doesn't have anywhere to go and mm -hmm. the airway doesn't go. Mm -hmm. And you're struggling at night to sleep properly because the airways aren't opening up, which yeah. then leads to so many other issues because you're under, you're under stress. Yeah. You're drowning all night. Yeah. And we need to be breathing through our nose. So when you open the palate up, it actually can open up the nasal cavity as well. That's right. So you can get a lot of benefit from that. But breathing through your nose is extremely critical for the oral health as well. It's one of the main factors. If you have young kids, besides just going through and brushing with them, which we're going to hit it, and I'm going to actually send you like a video yeah. showing the whole technique. We'll, we'll put protocol. that into the YouTube video. It's perfect, yeah. B-roll it. We, you have to be taping these kids' mouth if they're, if they're sleeping with their mouth open because it's just disrupting their microbiome, yeah. drying everything out, and they're going to be way more at risk for cavity if they're sleeping with their mouths open. Absolutely. Let's uh, switch gears to root canals. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we talked briefly, to, briefly on it on our first podcast together. Um, that's how, that was the first thing that you and I did together in terms of actual work was I was retreating two root canals that I had mm -hmm. received 15 years prior. Yeah. And most people are under the impression that we probably shouldn't kill a nerve in a tooth in the mouth and then keep that around, mm -hmm. which then in turn becomes necrotic. And then you have a living yeah. infection within your body. Yeah. What's, what's the updated 2023 take on root canals and what can someone do if their dentist has diagnosed them with needing a root canal? Yeah. Perfect. Well, my team and I, uh, I have another endodontist that works with me, Dr. Megan Rustad, and we've really been hitting this hard because our patients come in constantly. We have Probably, I want to say 75% of our patients are dealing with the same issue. Yeah. I already had a root canal treatment. What do I do now? Right. Okay. And so. And they might not be symptomatic, but they're under the awareness that. Or they've it's heard holistic. it could be a problem. Yes. Do I get this tooth out? Now, and then let's talk about that first, if you've already had a root canal treatment. And then let's talk about if you're told, hey, you might need a root canal treatment. Because that's when the cool stuff, the regenerative stuff, and it's very exciting. Amazing. But once you've already had a root canal treatment, it's like, oh, okay, I'm already here. So what do I do? Well, one, if you've already had, you know, the nerve removed from the tooth, 
we lost that already. We lost that super amazing, sensitive, you know, neurofeedback that was telling your body, like, don't bite too hard on that fork because you're going to break your tooth. That's gone, but you still have a lot of vitality to the tooth. And this is why I really have been struggling because I'm so integrated in the holistic community. But for the last about decade, it's like blanket statement. A lot of the holistic dentists are just like, every root canal treated tooth has to come out. And I'm looking at some of my patients who are in tears because they have 15 root canal treatments. And they're like, Dr. Kanner, I cannot pull 15 teeth out. Like, what would I even do? Like, they can't even comprehend that. And they're just bawling, they're crying fear. in my chair. Yeah, they're in fear. It's devastating. Yeah, of so course. it's like, okay, do we actually have to be that extreme? Is ripping your tooth out, this amazing organ, is ripping that out of your body the most holistic thing to do What's still in alive? this situation? What, what's still alive? And I'm speaking general. I know yes. you have to look into every individual's root canal and see what's going on, but generalize what's still it. Alive, what, what's this, still alive? This is across the board. When a tooth is in your body still, you've got all of the fascia holding the stuff together. The tooth itself is sitting in the periodontal ligament is wrapped around, integrated with the, the root surface, the cementum, it's called, of the root. Yeah. The periodontal ligament is fused to that. Then around that, there's periosteum and bone. It's all these living structures. Immune cells are moving around, blood flow, lymphatics, nerve tissue. You're getting neurofeedback. You're getting information to your brain constantly when your tongue rubs against that tooth. These teeth are still alive in that sense. They are connected to your body. You have the ability to defend things that are in and around them. Now, what you don't have the ability to do is send your nutrition, your minerals, your pet, whatever's going on in your bloodstream, it can't get inside the tooth anymore. That's okay? for certain. That's for certain. It can't get inside the tooth. Now, it may be able to get maybe a little bit like kind of into the cemental layers, like maybe a, a hundred microns or something tiny, but right. it's really insignificant. You can't get in it's the tooth. It's not penetrating into the So inner what part. does that mean? So do you rip a tooth out just because, you know, you can't clean the inside out? Or, or the inside, you know, can't have blood flow in it anymore. I think about it almost like your fingernail. Like your fingernail itself is just a mineral structure, but underneath it's supported by nerves and blood vessels. We're not ripping our fingernails out because the fingernail itself isn't a live structure. Your tooth is a mineral structure that was innervated at one point with blood, blood vessels, nerves, lymphatics. Once the nerve dies and you've had a root canal treatment, the inner part is gone. But what we need to make sure is that it's clean inside. We need to make sure How that- How do you do that? Well, you have to do extremely deep cleaning in the tooth. And so 95%, I'm gonna say conservatively, of root canal treatments that are being done are being done with really basic technology that's not cleaning everything out. Okay. We're leaving, they're leaving stuff behind. You mean during the root canal, the procedure. initial root canal procedure? Yeah. So during a root canal, what do they do? They drill a big hole within the tooth? Small or big, it just depends. Okay, and they sever? The nerve? So it, it depends on the status of the tooth. So okay. if you're needing a root canal treatment, let's just say your tooth's already dead. Let's say the dentist says your tooth died, you need a root canal. It's not the dentist killing the nerve. The nerve's already dead. It's already so dead. What, what blows my mind is some people are walking around with dead teeth. The whole tooth's infected. You've, the whole nerve space, it's like 100% dead tissue inside. Wow. And they're walking around thinking, oh, God, I don't want a root canal. I don't want a root canal. I'm like, you have a dead tooth. You have, actually have the worst case scenario right now, 100% dead tissue, toxins leaching onto your body every day. Yep. If you, I, I, I say this jokingly. Even if you have the worst root canal ever, they go in, they remove some of it. At least some of it's out of your tooth. You know what I mean? It's like people that are walking around with a dead infected tooth, worst case scenario. So don't put it off. You got to make a choice. Don't put off your dead tooth thinking that some magic's going to happen. This is, this is really important. It's what, really important. People need to hear this right yeah, now. Yeah, you have people, to. People are confused. I mean, I know, you have, I you have the, the biodentistry community, the holistic community, that's basically went on a witch hunt when it comes to root canals. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I, if I, if I first came across my plate probably 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I was like, mother of God, root canals is the root yeah. of all disease. Yeah. You know, you have this infection. Yeah. So what you're saying here is that we have to take a pragmatic approach to address how we are going to deal with a root canal that has been 
that's been done before. That's either been done before yeah. or you have a dead tooth. It's or you like, have a dead okay, tooth. At that point, it's gone. So you have to remove Let, Let's all talk about someone who has a root canal. Okay. So if they have a root canal and they're, they've been in fear that they need to figure out, should I yank this or yeah. whatever, you have a procedure where you call it, you retreat it. Yeah. Right? So let's talk about my root canals. Yeah. Um, you went into two of them mm-hmm. and- what did you do? You had some gnarly stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. And so you heard that. I had I had <laughs> oh, some no. gnarly stuff in there. And I every day <laughs> it's like it's I actually laugh every day at my it's job because I'm like, this is this is my service. Like this is my journey here on this earth. And I have to literally, if I don't visually, if I visually see the toxins in the biofilm and the, the trash that comes out of these teeth, I'm cool. I'm like, all right, now we can move forward. If I don't see it. But we're on a journey because we do these exploratory procedures where we open up these old root canals. 10 years old, we're going in. You know, let's go in and see what's happening in here. And I'm just like, okay, looking okay, looking okay. And I pull a piece off and I'm like, oh. And I, oh. I, I do it because I have to know. Oh. And like, I'm like, this is this is my journey. It's hilarious. Woof. It's disgusting. And I can't unsmell. That I is can't unsmell. That it. is so berserk. Let me ask you, is this why? <laughs> Air traffic controllers and <laughs> dentists have the highest suicide rate. Or maybe you can speak on that. I'm still here. I'm still have you, here. Have you heard that know. statistic? I have heard it. In dental school, they they showed us a chart, and there was a year or two where it was a fact yeah. in the 80s. I or mean, something. you're. I'm, I don't know. What I'm it assuming is now. you're in people's mouths, and they hate to it's see heavy. you. It's heavy. Right? It's, it's heavy because uh, everyone wants to get better. They expect it to be done perfectly the first time, and their immune system and you know their outcome has nothing to do with For sure. what you did. It's like. There's so many factors, obviously, and and not everyone is doing perfect work. You know, I can't always do perfect work. There's challenges in there. Yeah. We're 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 in we're in tiny caves, mini ex, like exploring with the smallest instruments you've ever seen, and just I'm on a battle. You're going into inner space. Yeah, you're going into inner and, space. And yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's like I I actually have this this thing that I play with in my head because I'm like, well, we need to just be in balance with the bacteria. Like we don't need to, this isn't a war zone, but the tooth, and I want to talk to Dr. Zach Bush about this actually, Mm. because I'm like, the tooth is such a, this root canal treated tooth is such a unique structure in the body. Mm. What else is there like this really there is no blood flow inside. So is it a battle zone? Like I see it as a battle zone, whereas, you know, the rest of the body I know has the ability to regenerate and heal around this. I know if I can get this tooth as clean as possible, I am giving the body the best chance and I'm creating an environment for healing. Mm. And that's all we're doing is we're trying to reduce the toxic load. And that's why endodontists that are out there are like, you holistic dentists are crazy because my treatments work because in a lot of people they do work and we see healing even if they're not getting everything out because we just need to get a critical mass down and the body can deal with this stuff so you're talking about lowering the burden right and that's just like parasites and bacteria infections and candida and fungus and mold you know we launched that para x formula and that whole thing was to lower the burden in the body we're not trying to wipe everything out exactly. or nuke it. Exactly. Okay, so let's go back to the root so canal. We, we got to get so it you, as clean as possible. You went into, you went into my root canals. Mm-hmm. You saw some gnarly stuff in there. It was infection that was in there that you saw? Yeah, so you usually will see the filling materials. Uh, the, the majority of what people are using, they've been using it forever. It's called gutta percha. Okay. It's an inert material. It doesn't usually... The composite? It, no, it's actually like, it, it's almost, it feels like a rubbery, like plastic material. Gutta percha comes from a tree. Okay. It's inside golf balls. Okay. But they put some heavy metals in there, unfortunately, so that it shows up in an x-ray. So there's bismuth or barium. That's one barium of Barium in the mouth. That's one of the negatives that a lot of people are like when they're learning that they're like, I don't want this in my mouth. And so for the past six, the seven atmosphere. years, yeah, we've been uh, removing it, doing deep cleanings. I basically go in with a pressure cleaner. With the laser, with the gentle wave, we're creating major turbulence in the cleaning solutions. Okay. Traditional root canal treatments, they're going in with a syringe and they're just trying to squirt cleaning solutions into very tight spaces. And it just 
doesn't thoroughly so clean the area. So you drilled into the top of the root canal. Let's just talk about what you did with mine. Yeah. You drilled into the top of it. We made a it. little hole in the top of the tooth. Now, you you did this without any imaging or anything. Or We, we did 3D we did imaging. A cone, we did a cone we beam scan. We always recommend 3D imaging okay. because I don't know what's going on in this tooth. Sure. There can be crazy extra branches or channels that weren't treated the first time. And it's nice to have a map. We can figure it out as we go really nice to have a map and a game plan before you go in. Okay. And so you can also find hidden infections. So you may decide, hey, we really need to hit this harder over here because of this size infection means this, or this type of bacteria could be present. We may want to test and see what type of bacteria are we dealing with. Right. Either way, we're blasting it with ozone. We're blasting it with the laser treatment, with the gentle wave treatment. It's using sound energy, light energy to create major turbulence to clean the tooth. So what used to just be kind of like a very very gentle surface clean by just rinsing, we're creating agitation that just wipes the biofilm off. And you can see it in the studies. You can see actually when you point the laser tip down, just thick caked biofilm, I'll show you the video, just clears right through in a matter of seconds wow. because the laser creates streaming in the fluids. Okay, so this is retreating a root canal versus yanking it out. And, yeah. and putting in a new tube. So you get it clean, you yep. ozonate it, and then you put in a biocompatible material, which I have found works really, really some well. Some kind of calcium? It's a calcium yep. silica okay. phosphate mix basically okay. and it works really well with the body how long does that last for because this seems to be like a maintenance project yeah well the studies have been out for about 15 years on this product yep. it's biocompatible it's osteoinductive meaning it actually promotes your bone cells and your ligament cells want to grow right on top of it incredible i feel good about that that means so it like, can communicate through that material yeah the minerals it's, it's something to material. do with the yeah the organic right. minerals are just activating the cells yep. um but so that's all we know is that for 15 years at least this okay. Okay. solid but yeah we may need to go back in every 10 15 years and just check it out absolutely you know? so that's where we're at right now just doing the best we can to help people save their teeth keep chewing keep their nutrition up because taking out teeth you just never know if you're actually going to be able to replace it and i'm sure you've come across teeth that you were aiming to retreat and then at that point, you're like, no, oh, just, I can't retreat this. Oh, this has to go. Absolutely. Okay, just the other so day, I went balance. in I went in, and I saw this tooth, and it just it started crumbling. And I was shocked. I, was, I hadn't seen a tooth in that bad of shape for a long time. And I said, you know, we, and this person had breast cancer on that side, you know? Wow. And so we're like, we got to take this thing out. And she was like, absolutely. And yeah. we got into a gnarly extraction that day. And, and, you know, and she's healing well. We did the PRF and the ozone. And so sometimes you pivot. It's all about the situation, the patient, how they're doing. If they're not doing well after a treatment, you know, you reevaluate. Maybe this tooth does have to go. This is the holy grail of science. This is what science is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be integrative. It's supposed to work through correspondence of feeling into the patient and what yeah. they're going through. Yeah. That is how we get to higher levels of attainment with our health versus the one size fits all allopathic purpose, which is without any purpose. Yeah. It's it's just so archaic and I love what you're doing. Okay, so now let's, we, we talked about cavities, mm -hmm. we talked about root canals, we talked about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about children and how we're gonna approach our children in their oral health. As you know, Symbiotic has been working mm -hmm. day and night, we're getting closer and closer, but you're a parent, you want, you want to take care of your children's health. Yeah. Are they on a water pick at age seven? Mm -hmm. Are they, you know, are they, uh, oil pulling? Yeah. Are they using ozonated water and hydrogen peroxide? And are you? I mean, at the very be at the very beginning, you're you're at least teaching them what to eat. Yeah. Now we t you brought this up, so I I got addicted to Starburst <laughs> when I was probably eight or nine, mm -hmm. and nobody in my family knew about it. And it just was like an addiction that I had. You mean you were in the room in the back, just gnawing on the Starburst? And I was in the treehouse. Okay, cool. I was in the treehouse. Okay. At least I was out in the treehouse and not in front of an iPad. Yeah. But I was I was eating the chair, the, the red and pink Starburst yeah. That's like cool. it was going out of business and I, I had to finish them off. Oof. And I did that for like probably at least two years. Yeah. And, and that set you back, you know? It set me back, yeah. for sure, in many ways. No, we've had some work to do, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So so outside of, you know, really encompassing nutrition and health and hydration and mineralization mm -hmm. and all of those things that are pivotal for a child, mm -hmm. even while the mother's carrying, mm -hmm. we can get into, you know, K2, fat-soluble vitamins and all those things, D3 yeah. and how those things interact, magnesium and all that. 
What is the standard practice care that they should do in terms of how they approach their child with dentistry and how they should approach with brushing yeah. and rinsing and all these things? Well, of course, like before you even go to that, what they're eating and drinking is so critical. They should be drinking so much water like water between all of the meals, you know what I mean? You, you just have to focus on that. And obviously you have to start at a very young age to instill these principles. It's like, we drink water, like that's what we drink. There's a treat every once in a while where you have this other thing, you know what I mean? Or Kids are clinically dehydrated yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. You know that, right? I mean, I can imagine. I, I just came across a crazy statistic wow. that they're like 85% of kids are clinically dehydrated. And that's, I mean, it's so all connected. To have healthy saliva, you need to be hydrated. Yep. You need to make sure you have enough minerals. And so getting the kids, I just, this mom was in this morning and I just gave her, I just piled all the symbiotica boxes here and I was like, here you go. Amazing. And she was, uh, she was super stoked. And I'm like, kids love this stuff. Like, yeah. let's get the minerals in their system. Let's get them hydrated. That's to start. Stay away from anything in bags, any processed foods. Yep. You've got, they've got to be eating whole foods. Yep. Just whole foods, water, that's it. And, that, and when you do it, for, I don't, I'm not a parent at this point in my life, but I can imagine when you do something from a very young age and that's just how it is, it becomes they're going to get so used to it and right. they're going to love it. And they've got to be using their teeth, right, yeah, on whole chew. foods. they got to yeah. chew. they yeah, got to break it down. pressures and exercise. That's, that's going to help the development help the of development, their jaw. Right? Absolutely. And, and so in terms of care... So when you get to... Basically, obviously, they should be brushing at least twice a day. You can do it more if you're... Twice a day. Yeah, morning, night. You can do it more if you're at yep. home and, you know, after you eat lunch. Like, make it a thing. But the key is, I think a lot of parents just send the kids in and they're like, brush your teeth. I'm like... First of all, the parents don't know how to brush your teeth because I sit with them and they're like, oh, thank you for showing me. So it's like, if you don't know, how would your kid know? And you have to actually do it with them. Like you literally need to sit with them and like brush every tooth with intention one at a time. You and I are going to do a video together. Yeah, They're going to gonna film us cool. and we're going to brush our teeth together. I love this. With the right rotation, the right angle, the right pressure. Perfect. And really be on it, that. That all matters yeah. because if yeah. you, you don't want to do too much pressure with big motions, you're going to create gum recession. Right. You know, so, and some people like the electrical or Sonicare toothbrushes. Some people like manuals. They all can be used and they all can be used in a beautiful way and you can clean your teeth properly. You just need to be going through the motions right. So my recommendation to my patients and for your kids is first you just brush the teeth and just coat everything. Then you floss. Now, if your kid has uh, like a lot of cavities, if your kid is at high risk for caries, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get ozonated oil and you're going to want to coat the floss with the ozonated oil and you're going to want to go in and floss for them. And so when you floss, you're going through the contact between where the teeth are touching. Now, not all kids, their teeth are touching, but you go through and you need to slide up and down the surfaces of the tooth in front and the tooth in back. And then you keep recoating the floss with the, the ozone oil. That's really, really important. You want to disinfect the mouth. Then you can even brush again because all of that stuff that came off with the flossing, like it's it's loose now in the mouth. So let's coat, get it off the teeth and coat the teeth. Then 30 minutes to an hour later, let's repopulate with some great bacteria. So whether using a prebiotic or like a probiotic mint, there's mints out there that kids love or like there's like apple flavor that they like. And then you get the good bacteria going because you don't just want to like wipe everything clean without repopulating and introducing some of the good bacteria. So for the kids- Symbiosis, yeah, right? Symbiosis. Create a balance. Absolutely. Let's talk about ozone. So ozone is unstable oxygen. It's mm -hmm. part of our atmosphere. You can smell it in nature when it mm -hmm. rains. It's yeah, how it's nice. our earth cleans itself. Um, ozone's been a big part of my life for at least 15 years. I was doing direct ozone injections at one point. Uh, we do the Ibu machine, all that stuff. So ozone, what it does is it penetrates and it breaks down the cell wall of a pathogen. Yeah. Right? Bacteria, no, no, yeah. Viruses. All the pathogens have, they don't have antioxidant capabilities. So the ozone's going to break them up. It's going to completely bust their membrane open. Uh, it's going to inhibit LPS and all of those things. The stuff that's coming off some of the bad bacteria, the anaerobic bacteria. But also what's cool about ozone is one, it's stable in oil. Yes. And then, all, and then the other thing is that it actually 
upregulates your immune response. So it's not just killing stuff, it's actually helping your red blood cells move, move around and slide, get a little slippery and slide around faster. Right. It's gonna increase lymphatics, it's gonna help with collagen production, stem cell recruitment. Ozone's amazing and it does a lot of great things. So getting it into the environment is great. So that's the remineralizing protocol for kids. It's pretty easy. It's like brush clean, floss with the ozone oil, get them the probiotics. Is it the same you know? thing for adults? Thing I mean, that's adults. kind of what I do. I mean, You can add the water pick in for adults and yeah. it just depends on your state of disease. If your gums are bleeding and you have decay everywhere, then I recommend using um, like HOCL, like hypochlorous acid in your water pick yeah. or something. What or about hydrogen, peroxide? You could use hydrogen peroxide, peroxide, food, peroxide, grade. food yep. grade. Yeah, so okay. something like that because you do want to get a little bit higher level of disinfection. If your mouth's healthy, just use regular water or salt water. You know, you can use that. So it's like it's all going to be kind of an ebb and flow depending on where you're at and what's going on. How stressed are you? How much sleep are you getting? Right. So, you know, at times where we're really optimally healthy, you know, you could probably go a long time without even brushing your teeth. You're not even going to build up the plaque because you're like feeling so good in your in your body yeah. but most of us are stressed most of us are dealing with a lot of environmental toxins and things in our life so we really want to just give our mouth the best chance possible and keep it super clean absolutely um, I love where we're going with this what's your take on oil pulling and tongue scraping these are two things that I do oh. religiously yeah I love tongue scraping I really does it got become addicting I, it really does you're I'm like, like what this is all this yeah stuff. especially when you when you're eating um, certain things that have like a lot of flavors or you you just know you're just like you know what I this is all sitting in my tongue and I want a fresh start here yeah. it's, it's felt really great I do it after um, all of my brushing and everything so the toothpaste is kind of part of it and then it kind of cleanses through yep. um, and I do it twice I do the tongue scraping twice the oil pulling I think is like important to do like maybe once a week it's more of a detox you it's, know yeah. it's not I think people it's think antimicrobial it's yeah. the monolaurin in the coconut that's creating an antibacterial effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so thick that I don't know. You have to, one, have a clean surface before you're going to use it. Did so you hear that? That's the most important yeah. thing that you said. You can't just oil pull when you wake up. You got to go through the cleaning mechanism. Yeah, yeah, if you're just oil pulling and expecting that to do all of the cleaning, like it's really not because remember, you've got these biofilms that are forming underneath the gum line. And I think that's the key even before we show the video is like most of the plaque is building up now, everyone's different. Where are you getting your cavities? Are they between your teeth? That means you need to floss more. You know, are they at the gum line? That means your bite may be off and you're not brushing around the gums as well. You know, yep. most of us, it's harder to get them on your biting surfaces because we're chewing. And so unless you're eating only processed foods and all the stuff's getting down into the little grooves, if you're eating whole foods, like that's cleaning the biting surface of your teeth. That's what, how our ancestors, they didn't really have issues. They didn't have processed food to get kind of stuck in all the crevices. Yeah. You know, they had nice wide jaws so they weren't getting cavities on the outside. You know, and so they're just cleaning their teeth with the stuff that they're eating, which is pretty awesome. And we can get back to that. So cut out the processed foods, keep the teeth clean where you have issues, clean around the gum lines. The bristles really should be like gently tucking underneath the gum line of the teeth. So just keep that in mind because that's really where I see most of the issues. What's your take on toothpicks? You have to be careful. I mean, any aggressive habit that you're doing rep repetitively, like you could start to create your own recession patterns in yep. the gums. So as long as you're doing it really carefully and mindfully, like everything else, even brushing, you can cause trauma. So just do it carefully. But if it maybe helps it's those you, thin toothpicks and not those big ones that are like. Pencils. Do you like these? Yeah. <laughs> so it means like you better say they're okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know those pencil toothpicks are so big. I'm yeah, like, how does? Uh, yeah. I'm like, how does well, anyone some use people this? People have big gaps. So when you, once you start getting implants and all these wow. things, you start losing bone. And so as you go through your journey and you lose teeth and you have recession, gaps get bigger in between your teeth and around your teeth. So then they, I just ordered a bunch of samples for my patients and we've got all different sizes of the little brushes because yep. everyone's a different shape. Yep. <laughs> What's exotic out there that people can do if it's like, it's like okay, it's miracle time in terms of home care? Oh, okay. Oh, I was thinking in the clinics at first. Um, exotic for home care. Um, for just like oral care products, yeah, things like that. Is there any like, is there any Hallelujah Hail Mary type stuff? People There's a lot doing? of stuff coming out with like uh, light therapy. Yeah, uh, I've been seeing a lot of that. It's just like devices you put in. It's 
what some kind of nanometer of light. Yeah, like there's uh there's also devices using vibration that help um, with Invisalign. Uh, I love uh, frequencies, like fre frequency specific microcurrents, amazing. Yeah. Um, so there's some really cool stuff that you can invest in. I don't know how the lights are working, how much they're penetrating. That's the thing with light energy. It depends on the quality of the light and the wavelength of the light to sure. see like what you're going to affect. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Okay. So I think if you've got the means and you want to try it out, in fact, some of my patients were we're developing some new toothbrushes and things with the light as well. So cool. I think it's all very cool and exciting. I think what's going to be really amazing is when we do start actually learning how to regrow, you know, not only we can regrow dentin naturally, we can stimulate that. Yeah. We can put the right materials in the teeth. We can put the light on the teeth. We can regrow dentin. It's not always what people think. People think it's going to like fill the hole that's there. It's not really like that. It actually grows in because it's coming from the inner part of the tooth. When the tooth's alive, the nerve and the pulp, the, the nerve and the blood vessels inside the pulp of the tooth, that's what creates your tooth structure. Yeah. It starts as just one big soft vessel and then it starts to grow and mineralize and the inner part gets smaller and the minerals fill and create enamel and dentin. So when you're older, you can still regenerate, but it, it all happens in this inward direction. So, but it's going to be really cool to see what happens with regrowing teeth, you know, in the future. And we're not quite there yet, everyone. I'm excited for that yeah, journey. But it's going to be cool. I think we'll get there and I think we can start, you know, taking some of these implants out and putting in you know, teeth implants. And I think, I think it's going to, we're going to have to find a combination of embryonic stem cells and frequencies, you know, and then, you know, certain chemicals and things, biochemicals that we can throw in the mix. So it's going to be some sort of combination of that. Well, we are coming towards the end of our conversation, but this is also the beginning of so much more. Mm -hmm. I think um, I see a, a very, very powerful layout of really going into detailed, detailed, purpose-filled daily activities that can help overall health. And yeah. this is one of them. And our conversations definitely take me into that realm of thought. And at the end of the day, I, I look back at our previous podcast and one part of it went completely hyperbolic. Yeah. And everyone loves the conversation of fluoride, mm -hmm. right? Which is a natural earth element, but we're not talking about that natural earth yeah. element. We're talking about the industrial waste product of yeah. fluoride <laughs> that has been added to tricky, all tricky. <laughs> municipal water supplies. Yeah. And, you know, there's communities out there that talk about calcification of the mm -hmm. third eye, calcification mm -hmm. of arterioles, calcification mm -hmm. of the heart center that are drumming down our senses, mm -hmm. neutralizing our thoughts and emotion and keep, keeping us basically dormant, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. What's your take right now on fluoride after the last two years since we've spoken about it on the, the actual podcast? Anything changed? What's happening? Yeah, I mean, the awareness is just skyrocketing, which right? is so cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's, been, there's more uh, lawsuits now against you know, uh, the uh, governmental agencies fluoridating. So it's very Which exciting. are actually private sector parties that are hired by <laughs> yeah. governmental agencies. Mother of God. Okay, keep going. It's just... It blows my sorrow, mind. But yeah. I'm very happy to see it's not fluoride is not even really in my realm anymore, which I love. Yeah. I mean, my patients that are coming in, everyone already knows about it. So it's very, very cool. I have been off of fluoride for a decade and no cavities. It's like it's not necessary. There's still a huge movement that needs to be made. And so we're just chipping away at starting to help these dentists that are so reliant on it, yeah. um, whether it's a financial and insurance reimbursement thing, or whether it's just still the indoctrination from you know their schooling. And I think it's hard to start backtracking this deep in people's career and when it's something so foundational that you really believed is helping people, it's really hard. And so don't get, if your dentist doesn't get it, you know, just, Maybe be gentle with them and no, forget that. Okay. <laughs> if your if your dentist doesn't get, get out of this, it. well, you can refuse it. You may have a great yeah. dentist that's yeah. really like skilled and doing great dentistry, but they're like, oh no, we no, we, we sorry, run. okay, uh, he's no. out. You're sorry. you're out of there. That is outrun. That is the litmus test. Okay, okay? <laughs> okay. If, if you're not on that wave of just at least looking at that research and yeah. saying, you know what, you know maybe there's something to this. You got to turn and burn <laughs> onto the next one. Reach out to me. To I'll, I'll link yeah, you to. I'll, to I'll link you to Dr. Dentistry. Val. I, I'll, I'll continue to send people from all over the world to you. Yeah. I mean, people are flying in from yeah. everywhere on this plane of existence it's to come exciting. And see you. We're opening up a new office. I wanted to share this with you because yeah. I was listening to the podcast with David. Yeah. Um, and 
it really hit hard for me, and I agree 100% that our entire population is just deoxygenated. Yeah. The oxygen levels are just dropping oh. on the earth. I mean, we're getting less than we need, and we don't all have access to a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Yeah. Um, but what we're going to do in our new office is we are going to offer basically bio treatment so that way, no matter what's happening or what you're getting, if you're if your teeth especially are being drilled on, think about this. You're drilling out composite materials, resins, metals. You know, you're breathing that in. It's not just amalgam that we need to protect ourselves and our patients from. Yeah. We're setting up the clinic so that every single dental chair station will have access to pure oxygen. So you can be being oxygenated breathing the cleanest air while you're getting your work done. I want in on is this. This, this is this next level. This I'm is what so it's excited. all about. Lack of oxygen oxygenation yeah. in the body is the root of all disease. That's yeah. where disease begins, anaerobic disease begins, yeah. all things co-infections, they just thrive with that. And we're not being oxygenated. We're not even breathing properly. Yeah. Just think about it on that level. What are people what what as we as we roll out of this what, what do you advise people to use in their home when it comes to ask. water picking yeah. and stuff? Because I'm not using municipal yeah. water. We do have a filtration system in this house, but I'm actually using spring water, and sometimes I use distilled water. Mm -hmm. Some people have a Berkey at home. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Yeah, I think anything besides the municipal is great. I, you can get an RO system and then add your own you know, minerals, I think is an excellent choice. You can get your own RO system and then you or distilled water delivery, and you can then ozonate it. Yep. You can get some pretty basic home ozone units and start ozoning your water for your water pick as well. That's awesome. That's what you I'm can doing. Use that, yeah. Yep. I think that's just absolutely key. And then for, you can also do the nasal ozone breathing at home. Super simple to do. Yeah. Um, You're bubbling you, it through olive oil? You just bubble it through olive oil. Yeah. And there's setups. It's really easy. Uh, Promo Life is a great company that has YouTube videos that teaches you everything. That's so awesome. whether you're doing insufflations or the nasal breathing, and that's something that we did. Uh, anytime patients have like upper um, arch infections and we're yeah. doing treatments, they are, you know, have that other access where they can breathe the ozonated oils while we're doing treatment. So it's oxygenating, it's helping, you know, stimulate their lymphatics and kill bacteria, viruses, everything else that's traveling through the system. So you're coming back on yeah, and we'll we're going to get into cavitations. Okay. Okay. We were supposed to talk about it on this one, <laughs> but that's going to be part yeah. three. Time flies when you're having the best, the best time, time ever. ever. Okay. I really appreciate this. This is awesome. I'm so stoked people were able to receive this conversation. This is just you and I talking yeah. and you expanding on the things that you love, which are pivotal to all of our success in life. You know, all everything is root cause. Yeah, and let's clear the pathways. Yeah. Let's open them up and connect. Any last words, Dr. Val? I love you. I love you too. Thank <laughs> you for being here on Wake the Thank Fit Thank you Cup. for having me. Love y'all. What a ride. Thank you so much.